and uh, lighting styles and architecture styles and uh, everything to play around with and play through as you go through the game of Red Faction Guerrilla because we wanted to really open things up and provide a lot of variety for the user. You know, we've, we took a lot of liberties with our interpretation of Mars, but I mean, who wants to play in a, a location that just looks the same and gets rather monotonous as uh, you play through for, you know, the hundred hours of gameplay you have in there? Well, we also looked at different movies. I know there's some questions about that earlier. Um, did we watch Aliens and, and did the walker come from that? We looked at all kinds of movies, um, but I think fundamentally we wanted to make sure that uh, it wasn't too far on the sci-fi aspect of it. We wanted you to really feel comfortable with what you're seeing um, and understand the functionality. I think in Aliens, in many ways, if you look at the Marines, you kind of understood what they were doing, even though it was a sci-fi movie. Um, so I think that, especially on the, um, the minor side of it, really keep it bulky, keep it functional looking, and how do they manipulate it to um, you know, manipulate the weapons to, to take on the EDF. Yeah, we really wanted the foundation of our world to be a believable world. So it, it's rooted in science that's not too far future, but we do throw in a few things that, you know, push it way out there. And, you know, just the fact of, hey, we've terraformed Mars to the point where you can run around in uh, short sleeves and without breathing, breathing apparatus is, I mean, that's way out there to begin with. Well, uh, speaking of the world, uh, do you guys want to tell us a little bit about, you know, why this game is open world uh, compared since the original games weren't? Well, I think for us, we really wanted to take that destruction to another level. And to even do that, we had to think uh, outside of the linear aspect. If you look back at Red Faction 1 and 2, at the end of the day, even though it had geomods, it was still a linear game. You still had to come back to the encounter and so forth. And so for us, once we had the technology of Geomod 2.0, it was just, and pulling back the camera and the open world part of it, it just really kind of melded together and just made a whole lot of sense. And for us, it was really an easy decision to go to third person and open world. Yeah, I mean, in Red Faction 1 and 2, you had Geomods, but you were still relatively confined. You were in tunnels in 1, and you were in a pretty much linear game in 2. So, Gorilla, we really opened it up for you. It's open world. You've got so many choices, whether it be for the missions or activities or guerrilla actions or, you know, you've just got choices of whatever you want to do, wherever you want to go, and whenever you want to do it. It just it, makes for a lot more fun. Yeah, we just made pockets of challenges that basically you can figure out that challenge in any way you want. We can't really contain you or tell you how to play the game. You kind of have to go out there, explore and experiment and die a lot, blow up stuff a lot, and then hopefully... Um, complete whatever that challenge is that we put out there for you. Now, uh, do you guys want to talk That's about what he's doing here with the, uh, with the high importance targets and uh, what that changes throughout the game? Well, for me, the high importance target is really the true, um, uh, a true aspect of what open world is. These are just scattered throughout the world and they, and they mean a lot to the EDF. And you just come upon them, you can leave them alone, you can hit it and in and, and turn reduce the overall EDF control and raise them around the civilians. Or not, and so these are a high importance target or any target is really a great example of that open world aspect. It's just in the world; it's doing its own thing, and you decide when and where and how to interact with it. And it gives you another opportunity to be a gorilla, right? You see the target, you hit it, and you run. It, it reinforces the gameplay style that we're really pushing here. You can't just stick around and play this like a regular shooter. If you do, you find most of the time you're going to get wiped out. So change your tactics, become a gorilla, and figure out how to play the game in a new light, you know? Uh, how, one question that I've seen come up a couple times is uh, people are really wondering uh, what the difference is between like the art and the different sectors, because a lot of people are like, wow, this is Mars, shouldn't it just be red and brown? You know, you can clearly see here there's definitely some greens and blues in the environment, so uh, can you give us a little insight into that art background and, you know, what, ha how it'll change as you progress through the game? Totally. Uh, monochrome can be cool if done appropriately, but it could also get boring. So we took a lot of liberties. We defined each of the areas, each of the sectors in the game, and we decided what kind of architecture would be appropriate for them, and then we designed it specifically for those areas. So uh, Parker, where you start out, is one of the oldest communities, mining community. You'll see that their stuff is all kind of put together out of the bits and pieces that they were able to salvage from 
you know, their, their spacecraft.